so I uh, welcome you again to um, this lecture about success. This is the first lecture of the success part of our module. So I'll use my time today to lay some ground rules and prepare you for the journey that we are going to go through throughout this semester. So before we do anything, let's ask ourselves what is success? And this is actually a question to you. So what is success? What does success mean to you? OK, yes? Success is achieving goals. Achieving goals is success, yes. What else? Being happy with what you do is success. Yes. Success is winning a challenge. Success is winning a challenge. Success is winning, winning a, a challenge. challenge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So is, is achieving goals, winning a challenge, being happy. Exactly right. So success is achievement of goals. Success is happiness. And success is positive impact that you have on others. So these are that much we, we all know. But in this module, in this course throughout this semester, I would like to maybe dig deeper. What kind of goals that will make you happy? Uh, where does the goal start? And, and things like that. So let me talk about achievements. So we said achievement. This was the first thing that we, we say when we talked about um, uh, success. And let's see an example of an achievement. Can you give me an example of an achievement, something that you consider an achievement? Not necessarily at the personal level, could be something someone else did. So winning a medal is an achievement, right? What else? Graduation, Graduation is an achievement, yes, yes. What else? Money. Earning money is an achievement. Yes, yes, and, and maybe building the Great Wall of China is an achievement, isn't it? Making the iPhone is an achievement. <laughs> okay, okay, the iPad will be achieved. <laughs> okay, the iPad is an achievement. Having Google is, a, is an achievement, isn't it? Yeah. But where did they start? So all these achievements, where did they start? So, okay. So they start with? An idea. Or a challenge. Yes. And where is that? In a group of people, like us. Where exactly? In our hands? In our brain, yes, I fully agree with you. So it's actually in the brain, a thought in the mind. So that's really where achievements start. I want you to always remember this, because everything that we have today that is physical started at some point as a thought in the mind, as an electrical electrochemical impulse in a brain of somebody. That's extremely important. So every success that we talked about, every achievement needed this gray matter, needed that brain, that thought within an individual to start. So it's, you, you could call it a dream, you could call it a thought, you could call it a challenge, but where it started is here. So even if, if you look at, at what we have put there, why did China want to build a great wall? Because there are people attacking them, so that's a challenge. But they could have done it in different ways. Someone has decided that it's going to be a wall, it's going to be that big, it's going to be that high, and that person or group of people put together resources and 
people and built the Great Wall of China or the iPad or the iPhone or the Google or whatever. Okay. So I would like to put this into a framework like uh, uh, structure and I would like to link it back to engineering. So I would like to link achieve the achievement to the framework of CDIO. Now, what does CDIO stand for? Yeah, louder so that we don't have to use the, the conceive, design, implement, and then operate. So, so it starts with conceive. And that's a system approach for success. So conceiving is really about having a thought, an emotion, a desire, an urge in mind. It's something here. You, 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 you know that there should be a wall there. Or maybe you need a device that can do that. But you don't really know what is that. That's, that's the beginning of conceiving. That's the C. Then you move into design. So, so now you want to tell someone else, look, I want to build a wall. So how big is that wall? I don't know, maybe, maybe that high, uh, maybe that wide. So you start to put dimensions. You start to put substance into it. And that's really when you start designing. And you add structure. And you, you, through that, you'll be able to communicate to others, convince them. Uh, inspire them so that they follow you. You think about anything. Start as a thought, then now you have to put things into it, and you start conceiving, then designing, and if you are persistent enough, you'll move to the next step, which is implementing. So maybe that's the time where you start building it, you start buying raw materials, uh, saving money so that you can purchase it if you want to purchase the device or uh, uh, obtaining technology if you are going to build it yourself and eventually after you make it uh, if, if it's a program or a software you, you need to to program it and after that you are going to operate it or use it so i really would like to convince you that success which is achievement of goals is done through conceiving, designing, implementing, and then operating. And it all starts in the brain. And luckily, this is something, unlike the iPad, we have right now. OK, so which one do you want, the iPad or the brain? So you are, you are willing to give up your brain? You, no, no, but which, which one you would rather have? Both. <laughs> OK. So, so let's, let's, let's talk a bit about the brain. And let's meet the brain. We said that everything starts in the brain. So the brain has three major structures. So can you, can you show me in your hands how, how do you think the brain look like? Something like that. OK. OK, something like this. OK. So, so, so let's say the brain is this. The brain has a, a structure that goes into the spinal cord. And that's really the base of the brain. And that's called the old brain. It's also called the reptilian brain. And the reason why it's called the reptilian brain, because re reptiles also have similar structure for the brain. Now, in human, what we have there is some hardwired things. We have the instinct there. Now, no matter what I do, if there is a huge explosion, you guys are going to run away. You'll wait for the iPad. You are willing to die. 
you will die. If there is an explosion there, yeah. then yes. So that, what, what is going to make you run from your place and hide there without really thinking of the lady next to you? And, and yes, and exactly, and push him and run is, is, is the survival instinct that is hardwired in, in the old brain. Now, on top of this, you imagine it as if it is a, a scoop of ice cream. There is another one on top of it that's called the middle brain. Yes, very, very delicious ice cream. So, so you have the reptilian brain. That reptilian brain, no much thinking is taking place there. It's just like things that are related to survival, run, fight. Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> Interestingly, love and emotion is in the middle brain. Yes, everything in the brain, yes, everything in the brain. But we need to understand the parts of the brain, that's gonna be very important. So, since you are in the mood of, for love, <laughs> so love is in the middle brain. So the, here where we have emotions and feeling. The, outer level or the outer layer of the brain is where we have the high level thinking, reasoning, and language. So the reptilian brain is incapable of language. The emotional brain or the middle brain is also incapable of language. The language is in the new brain. We call it the new brain or the outer layer of brain. Now, how do we know all these things? There, is, there have been a lot of studies into, into the brain. Some of, some of the studies happen when someone has an accident. So if a certain part of the brain is affected, it affects language. So people, after having stroke at times, they lose part of their movement, and maybe they lose their ability to talk or to speak. So when, when, when the researchers study which part of the brain has been affected after maybe a stroke or after an accident, then they started to know more and more and more about the brain. Not only that, now we also do have uh, MRI machines and we have a, a test that's called functional MRI. So the functional MRI is, they could put you in the machine and then they ask you to think of certain thing or talk or solve a, a, a mathematical challenge and then they see which area of the brain will lit with activities. And through that, we accumulated a lot of knowledge about the brain. Now, we, we are still yet to scratch the surface. We knew a lot, but the brain still pretty much a mystery. But we are moving and Every day, every month, every year, we are a step closer to understanding the brain. And understanding the brain is very, very um, important thing because through that we will understand ourselves and we understand other people. And if we understand ourselves and other people, we, we will understand how do we build uh, relationships, how do we have uh, peace in this world, and, and, and how, it depends on what your objectives are. How can you sell things to people? You have a question? No, I'm, I'm fine if you have a question. I'll be more than happy to, uh, to try to answer. <laughs> okay, so that was uh, use of which part of the brain? That's the... The emotional brain, you think? Okay. So, 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 yeah, if we had the FR, fMRI, we could have maybe done something about, about, about that. So, so, so now I, I'll try to, to, to give you an exercise to see, to, to prove to you a certain point. I won't tell you the point until we finish the exercise. Now, we said the middle brain is, has emotions and feelings. So, very quickly, what's 5 times 17? 85. Um, okay, what's the, what, what's the color of your hair? Black. Okay. 
Describe your emotional state. <laughs> That's yours. <laughs> Are you happy? Really? How do you feel now? <laughs> okay. I want you all to think of these questions. So you said um, you feel happy. And your emotional state is? A bit confused. Confused. I want you all to think of, of these questions. And you tell me which one was easier to answer. What is the color of your hair, or 5 times 17, or how do you feel now? 5 times 17. So, and, and there's a reason, because the, the part of the brain where emotions are, it's incapable of language. And that's why, when you ask, how are you? What would people say? Fine. Fine. Thank you. Actually, they don't even think. <laughs> Sometimes you think, actually, I'm not fine. Why did I say fine? And, and that's, that's, that's normal. That's, that's normal, and, and, and I don't want you to feel uh, bad about that. But hopefully, by the end of this course, things are going to be, to be different. So the last part, as I said, is the new brain, and is where the language and high thinking and reasoning takes place. So we have the reptilian brain, or the old brain, and we have the middle brain, and we have the new brain. We have where the, ins the survival instinct is, the emotions are, which apparently that's the part that is very active of you today, <laughs> and, and the thinking, and the high-level um, uh, high thinking, and language, and reasoning uh, brain. So I promised you to bring something with me, right? OK. You want an iPod? So this is, this is, this is a model of the brain. Yeah. So this is a model of the brain. This is, a, this is, this is an eye brain, yes. Yeah. So, so this is the part, the, the, outside, the outside part. Okay. So this is the new brain. Okay. This is the middle brain. And this is really where you have the old brain. So this is the reptilian brain. Maybe I come closer for you guys to see. So this is the the new brain where we have what? I High-level thinking, reasoning, and language, extremely important. And we, we have other things besides that, but these are the things that we really need. Here we have the, the, the emotional brain, or uh, sometimes you call it the middle brain, and this is the old brain or the reptilian brain. So I want you to think of this as the ice cream. You have the first layer, first scoop, and then another scoop on top of it, and a third scoop on top of that. That's a, a useful uh, way to remember that. So this is, this is have, you seen, have you seen a real brain? Would you like to see a real brain? Yes. Okay. That I have as well. So you see, it's, it's very good to uh, have the uh, dean of the school of medicine to be your friend. So this is a real human brain. This is a real human brain. Okay, so I'm going to pass it around for you. I want you, I want you, trust me, trust me, trust me. This is, this is safe, this is safe. This is actually preserved and um, uh, there is a, a layer of wax on top of it. You just need to wash your hands after, after that. Yes, yes. So I, I want you, because that's very important. We need to understand where everything started. Okay, they have signed the... Uh, Indemnity form, right? Yeah, okay, yes, yeah. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> okay, touch, touch it like that first. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, hold it. 
Yes. 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 No, it's dry. There's no water. Yeah. You want water? Oh, the owner. Oh, it's the owner. Um, actually, actually, I there, there's a there's a story behind this. Uh, the guy? Yeah. The brain. No, this 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 was one of my students, and and he used to come late. <laughs> but and I've been using this for quite some time. I'm actually really looking forward for a new specimen. So, yeah. Sorry, you 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 want the other brain? You want? Oh, no, please don't open it. No, no, don't, don't don't open it, please. Yeah, don't drop it. Don't open it. Just pass pass it around quickly. Yeah, yeah. I I, I will I will allow you to 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 handle it later. So I want you to pass it. I want you to feel its weight. Yeah. Yes. You smell it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can kiss it also. Yes. 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 It's good. 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 Is heavy? Yes, it is heavy. It is heavy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, no, let's pass it here. Because these guys are really looking forward to it. Yeah. So you see, there is a left brain, a right brain. Uh, if I cut it, then you will see the outer brain, the middle brain. Yes. You've seen this? Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The real thing looks much better than this, right? Mm. Brain's coming. This guy. He was in foundation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was, yes, yeah. Well, yeah. Ha has been some time now. Yeah. Yes, yes. One of my ex students. Yeah. The guy who used to come late to the class? Yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. No, I didn't. I mean,. People die for very different reasons, right? <laughs> you are an engineer, you should know. No, you are always on time, so you don't have to worry. Yeah, yeah. So you know where the front is? This is the front. Yeah, so this is the right. This is the left. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Pass it this way. Yeah. Yes, please, you can take pictures, yes. Yes, yes, yes. If we had the iPad, the picture would have been much better, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Pa pass, pass it across, pass it across, and then we will, we will, you can have a group picture with it later. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you look at, yeah, look at a brain that was always late. Okay. Yeah. yeah, pass it around, pass it around here, here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, when 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 uh, after the class, uh -huh. I'll have a photo session. <laughs> then we can have all. Yeah. Can I borrow this? <laughs> so You will stay with me, right? Yeah. Is it okay? As Mira goes, you, yeah, yeah, you, 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 yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go and do your work since he's here, and uh, he will yeah, tell her what whatever he needs to do. Or Unless you want to attend, it's up to you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Move, move it. Move it. Move it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will have a photo session at the end of the class. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Did you like it? But you liked it. And you want to take a picture with it? Okay. So, so is this your first time touching a human brain? Yes. Give yourself a huge round of applause. Success, yes, indeed, indeed. So, so whatever happens, remember, where everything starts, where all the great things, and unfortunately, the not so great things, started there. Whether it's a book, or a device, or a car, or a dream, or a war, it always starts here. And that's why it's extremely important that we understand it, we know how, do, how can we use our own brains efficiently and effectively, and also how can we use our understanding of the brain to influence our, our relationships in a very uh, positive manner. So I'd like now to talk about intelligence, IQ, and EQ. Now the dictionary defines intelligence as the capacity for learning, reasoning, understanding and similar forms of mental activity you have to you have to stay with me now yeah similar mental forms of mental activity aptitude grasping thoughts relations relationships facts and so on so forth and normally this is measured with IQ which is the intelligent quotient it's a number that's normally measured through uh, a test. So you take a test and then they assign you a number and that's your IQ value or IQ number. Now, recently, we started to talk about EQ, which refers to the emotional intelligence. As a matter of fact, IQ tests re focuses only on you know, things like reasoning, uh, pattern detection, and things like that. So, so uh, uh, people 
who may score very high on an IQ test may not be necessarily very successful people, may not be very well liked people, and things like that. And, and hence, the term emotional intelligence has been coined. What about the emotions? Besides the, the cognitive learning pattern detection intelligence, what about the emotional uh, intelligence? And interestingly, again, research show that success in life is predicted by the emotional intelligence much more than it's predicted by the IQ. So people who are outgoing, who, people feel, who other people feel comfortable around them, who can build relationships, who can collaborate, who can build teams and work in teams often are the ones who will be successful, who will be leaders and, and, and managers and business people and successful people in, in general. Now the interesting thing is education focuses on the IQ or the EQ? IQ. We focus on the IQ. We focus on you guys memorize things, learn theories and things like that. Now, but if, if what you need to succeed beside the IQ and maybe even more than that is the EQ, how come the schools are not putting more effort in developing you in that um, uh, direction? But this is changing. And that's why you are today sitting here and learning this course. And that's why I think I told you this could be the most important course that you have ever taken in your life. So I would like now to talk to you about the emotional intelligence as my favorite writer in this field, Daniel Goldman, has put it. So he says that, first, we need to have self-awareness. And under self-awareness, he talks about emotional awareness. And hence, every moment of our life, are we aware, really, how do we feel? Or we just think we are fine? Or we are OK? Or do we really know how do we feel from an emotional point of view? Now, do we have an accurate assessment of our own strength capabilities and weaknesses or not? And also, do we have self-confidence? So these three domains are under the self-awareness part. Now, why self-awareness is important? Because it can lead to self-management. So if I am aware of myself, how do I feel emotionally? I'm confident, I'm also aware of my strengths and shortcomings, then I will be able to manage myself better. So under the self-management, you have the emotional self-control. How can you have control over your own emotions and not allow the external stimuli to change your emotional state? How can you have more control? And also he talks about transparency, adaptability, achievement orientation, initiative, and optimism. So when we are self-aware, then we can manage ourselves. When we know ourselves, then we can manage ourselves. If you know your brain, then you can manage your brain. It's just like if you know how the car works and you know how to drive it, then you can drive it. Otherwise, you see it moving, but you don't know how to really control it. Even if, so can you imagine if, you, if, if without you knowing how to drive, we put you in a car, what's going to happen? You may start it, but will you be able to stop it? Maybe a disaster is going to happen. He also talks about social awareness. So if you notice, this domain is really within me. Who am I? What I have been doing? And, and also, how do I control myself? But the social awareness is, do I empathize with you? Do I know how do you feel? 
do I have an organizational awareness? Do I know how does this class work? Do I know the relational structures within this group? Who is the group leader? Who is the group clown? Who is I don't know what? All these are organizational awareness. And also service orientation. Do I have an orientation to help people? Do I have a, uh, the tendency to make people grow and, and, and help them achieve their uh, full potential? So that's the awareness. Now, once I have the awareness, then I will be able to manage the relationships. So in managing the relationship, he talks about developing others. So do you develop others? Do, do your parents really develop you? Do your, have your teacher been able to develop you? And things like that. Inspirational leadership. Influence. How do you influence people? Now, why do you need to influence people? We need to influence people for a variety of reasons. So if I'm a teacher, I want to influence you so that you come to my class. If I'm a salesperson, I want to influence you so you buy my, my, uh, my, my product. If I am uh, 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 a politician, I want to influence you so that you vote for me. Life is all about influence. And all of us want to influence each other in one way or another. And, and also, are you a change catalyst? So do you, do you make change happen? Do you get change, positive change? Do you make it happen easier? Do you show the people the way how things happen? And how do you manage conflict? Conflict is inevitable. So how do you manage it? Do you shy away from it? Do you approach it aggressively? Or do you have a better way of managing conflict if and when conflict uh, happens. And finally, teamwork and collaboration. Now, very interestingly, these traits, the empathy, the collaboration, the teamwork, are the skills. These are the skills that you need for success in the 21st century. Now, I want you to think with me for a while and look at all these skills that we have put on the board. And then you imagine if you have them or you have most of them, but you don't have technical knowledge. You don't, let's say you, you are, as an engineer, you don't have all the skills that you need. You didn't really score very highly in your papers when you were in the, in the university. Do you think with these skills, plus the internet and Google, you'll be able to find your way around? Because the, the knowledge that we are making you memorize and learn is actually very much available now online. If you have access to the internet, and especially if it's an iPad, so you can, you can really carry it with you, you can get all the information you can, the, we, we, we made you memorize the periodic table, right? In, the, in chemistry, in, in the high school. But actually, now you could just Google the image and you find the periodic table on the spot. And, and, and if you want to know the diameter of the moon, what would you do now? If I say, what's the diameter of the moon? You will Google that. What's the distance between Johor and Penang? You will Google that. What's the capital of Gambia, you will Google that. All this knowledge, a century ago, you need to memorize it because when you go out to work, it's not there. You don't have it. You have to memorize the knowledge. You have to know this information in order for you to do your work. But now more and more, we, are, we, don't, we don't memorize things. How many phone numbers do you remember now? Four, phone. Yeah, phone numbers. You, you're not sure. I, you know, when I was your age, I remember like 20, 30. I remember all of them because that's, you know, there, there, was, uh, there was no mobile phone, maybe, maybe slightly younger than you. There was no, mobi no, mo no mobile phone. And for you to, uh, there was no iPhone or a phone with you that you say. And, and, and seriously, and I have to remember uh, my, my own uh, house number, my, my, my relatives, five or six my, of my friends that I call, 
And interestingly, I still remember these numbers until now. Uh, but uh, I think I only know my number, my mobile phone number, and my house number. I don't even know my office number. I don't even know my extension number. Because all these things are stored somewhere. So we rely on, on the device. But the emotional intelligence part of doing things, th there's no way when you make me angry, I say, let me Google how to deal with you, then I come and deal with you. <laughs> because I'm going, to, I'm going to deploy something. I'm going to either say something that will harm you, I'm going to maybe hit you, I'm going to say something that's going to make you very unhappy, and then the ripple effect is, is, is bad. Maybe you, you quit the course because something I said. Yes, these things, these things happen. These things do happen. And, and I mean, this is, this, is, this is a good example. I mean, this poor guy used to come late for the class. <laughs> so, if you notice, this part here is about self. And this part is about what we do. So this is what I have. This is how I deploy it. And this part here is about awareness. So do I know about myself? Do I know about my relationship with, with the other? While this part is about regulation. So you have self and doing. And here you have awareness and then you have here the regulation. So that's, that's the emotional intelligence framework that we are going to work on for the entire semester in the success aspect of this module. So we will, we will be working together. And I want you to help me, and I'll try to help you, and I want you to help each other on how do you become more emotionally aware? How do you become more self-aware of your own emotions, of your own strengths, of your own capabilities, of, you, of your own areas for improvement and development? And also to be aware of how you can impact others and how others can impact you. When you know that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to influence you, if you know what I'm trying to do, you are aware of it, then you say, okay, he's trying to influence me. Hmm, is that good or bad? If it's good, let him influence me. If it's bad, then you, you, because you are aware, then you won't allow this to have a negative impact on you. So the awareness is extremely important. So that's what we are going to do for the, for the entire semester. And, and we will start with maybe the emotional awareness. Then we will move to the um, accurate self-assessment. I'll give you tools. I'll get some people to speak to you as well to teach you how can you analyze yourself and know your strengths, your areas for improvement, any threats that are, uh, you know, maybe in the environment that may prevent you from achieving your goals and achieving eventually uh, success. So today I want to talk specifically about two aspects of the course that I need to really start for all of you because uh, you will need to apply them daily on open learning. And the first one would be about uh, describing emotions. So in order to be aware about, of our emotions, we need to know them. That's, that's very important. And if you meet someone new, what's the first thing that you want to know about him or her? Before the phone number, yes? Name, name. If, if, the first thing, when we introduce ourselves, we, we, we give our name. Or, so our emotions, for, in order for us to know them, in order for us to really be aware of them, we need to give them names. So what you will need to do is to introduce, your, to introduce yourself to your emotions in these domains, emotions and feelings. So I want you to be aware daily, how do you feel mentally? You feel crazy. Sorry? Can you, can you say this in the... Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. It depends on the person. It's like when you meet someone new and he's like, his character is like the same as yours. And this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, for me okay. it's like that. Someone so that, is that like how me. you feel when you meet me? I know. For you <laughs> okay. it's not crazy because you're my lecturer. Yeah. So what, what you will do, every one of you individually will be reporting these. So at any point in time when you are reporting, how do you feel mentally? Do you feel mentally sharp? Do you feel mentally aware? Do you feel mentally confused? That's your choice. But what I want you to do is, and what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with words, with adjectives that help you to pick from in the beginning. Because I know it is challenging. It's not easy. It is difficult. But the more you do it, the more you will be Mm, so that's what I'm feeling now. Um, okay, so that's a feel of maybe frustration. You know, you, you, take, you take a while and then you see what you really are feeling. And I want you to, to be able to describe your emotional state. Relationally, how do you feel? So all of us have relationships, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your friends, your relationship with, with the entire network of people. So how do you feel? Do you feel connected? Do you feel supported? Do you feel disappointed? I, whatever you feel, I want you to own it. I want you to be able to describe it. And as we move on, and as you do this on a daily basis, you will see that in the beginning, it starts difficult, awkward, but as you move on, it will become easier and easier and easier and eventually will become very enjoyable. And it's extremely important stage for you to be able to be emotionally aware in order for you to manage yourself. I want you to talk about, to describe yourself or your feelings physically spiritually we, we we don't feel uh energized and healthy and all the time we could be feeling down we could be feeling uh, uh, uh lacking energy or or whatever so i want this also to be uh reported spiritually how do you feel and vocationally vocationally is related to your career so as, as a student how do you feel do you feel achieving do you feel challenged do you feel whatever? So I want you to use this as uh, a framework to report on uh, how do you uh, feel on a daily basis. So what will you do when you get registered on Open Learning? Once you go into the success uh, web page, you will see that there is, my, there, is a, there is a tab that's called My Emotions Today. And it's very easy, very nice. It's just like Facebook. And then you could put your emotions there. And, um, interestingly, the online students are already reporting their emotions even before they listen to this, uh, uh, to this lecture. So you'll find people who have already uh, been reporting their uh, emotions there. When observing something new, a baby normally starts by giving it a name. And, and that noise that that's babbling the, the baby is doing, well, well, it's actually trying to say, what is this? <laughs> and trying to give it a name. And if you, for those of you who have um, uh, younger siblings or nieces or, or, or cousins or whatever, you, you, will, you, will, you will notice that Often, um, babies, they have their own language, right? So they call things with different names. So they call the water differently. They call their mother differently. That's because for us, we need to give things a name in order for it to exist. We think of images, and that image has to have a name. And uh, I actually do... Um, 
give training uh, to outsiders from time to time. And I use exactly the same, the same examples that I'm using here. And I want to prove to them that they are, we, every time we see something, we give it a name. So, so let's say uh, I arrive at the venue of the training and they don't know me, so I'm just like a stranger to them. And then I come in. And they are like together with their friends talking or having coffee, then I move in. And then after, when I reach this stage, I say, look, when I came in, what did you call me? No, we didn't call you anything. No, 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 no. In your own mind, what did you think of me? So, what? The guy, yes. So, so actually, so they say, we said the guy with the mustache or the tall guy. Or, so they, 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 you give yourself, you have to, when you see something, when you see someone, you give, it, you give it a name. Now that name could change later when you know the real name or when the status of that person changes for you. But meanwhile, you will give that person a name. Even if you have a thing, you will give it a name. So you could, if you don't know what is this called, you may call it the thing, right? Yeah, because, you know, I want this thing, the thing, you know that, yeah. So th that's when we are struggling with, with, with the name. So that's how we, we start. Now, the baby often, after give this the name, what will it do? Well, what will the baby do? Put it in the mouth. Yes. Why? You want to test it. You want to feel it. You want to know what is this. And exactly what you've said, you want to feel it. So the language is the higher level. The, lower, the, the level below is the feeling. So the baby want to feel. What is this? Now, depending on if this tastes good, then we'll continue chewing on it. If this was bitter or hot or uh, give you an electric shock, what will happen? Throw it and, and run, and that's when you engage the reptilian brain. Now, every time when this happens, there are millions and millions of neurons into the brain that are firing. And when we make a decision like we decide to suck on it or throw it away, the act itself is driven by some uh, neuron being firing. And if the neurons keep on firing in a same, in a certain pattern, then the neurons will wire. So in neurology, there's a saying, neurons that fire together, fire in terms of having an electric signal there, wire together. And that's how, when you repeat something long enough, you become better at it. Because now you have built new connections in your brain. So you keep on repeating it, you'll be better at it. Not only that, that's how habits form. So you could, you, we keep on repeating something long enough until it becomes a habit. So if you want to change a habit, there is a way. But that will happen only when you rewire the brain. Now the brain physically rewire. That has been proven from a medical point of view. Because when people have a stroke and part of the brain, let's say, that controls speech is affected, after a while, a different part of the brain start to, taking, start to take care of that specific function a new connection forms, and then the person can talk again. Likewise, when they lose the movement in a certain part of their body, then another part of the brain takes care of this function, but it's a new learning. It's very tedious, very painful, but people do learn again how to use their hands and legs after they have stroke, for example. So, so brain rewiring is extremely important, and we do have control over it through this process that I'm going to 
outline now. So this is a thinking, this is a mental model for thinking. So the first stage is naming. You give something a name. The second stage is classifying, and that's when emotions can be invoked. And finally is wiring or rewiring, depending on what you do. Now, why this is important? What is the part of the brain that controls the higher level thinking? It's the new brain. And that new, new brain controls what? Language as well. So it means language is really under our control. Now, when you are met with a situation, when an event happens to you, you can choose what to call it. So I give you an example. If I come to the class and I am, I look angry. If you call me, oh, there comes the angry guy, you've given me a name. Whether you like it or not, the name that you have given me will impact how will you feel. So if I'm a bully, and I come in and say, there comes the bully. Do you think you'll feel good? You, I don't think you'll feel good. So that will affect your, your feeling. And because your feelings are now affected, what you are going to do to me, what you are going to respond or react to me is going to be in a certain direction. And that's the way your brain is going to wire as the neurons are firing in a certain direction. Now, I may not be a bully. I may not be even angry. Maybe this is my features. Maybe I look like that. But you made a decision to call me the angry guy. And because you made the decision, there are consequences that you are paying the price for, whether you like it or not. So. What I'm saying is you need to name things positively in whatever way that you can. Not only people, but events. So for example, if uh, something bad happens to you, if, if, if uh, you have a flat tire, uh, if you come late, you need to think of how do you make this somehow positive. We will talk about this more because giving it a positive name will help you connect it emotionally in a positive way and that will lead to uh, a positive wiring and eventual uh, rewiring. So let me give you an example. Why is this? Okay, so you gave it a name. What do you think of it? So, so yeah, let, let's, let's do the, yeah. yeah. Ladies responded very quickly, yes. So what did you say? Yeah. Just say anything when you see it, what do you feel? Disgusting. Disgu disgusting, yes. What else? Scary. Scary. Dirty. Dirty. Have to escape, run Have away. to escape. Okay, so let's stop it there. So, so do you see what's happening? So you see this, and then you think it's disgusting, it's scary, it's dirty. So what should we do with it? Right? So let's spray it, let's kill it, let's destroy it. That's, that's how things work. Now, before I move on, I want to share with you something. And um, it's, it's actually a story that happened in, in our school. It was 
couple of years ago, we were having our um, uh, staff meeting with the, with, with the other lecturers. And, um, you know, I was asking about, you know, what's happening, uh, how, how, how is this project going on, how the classes are going on. And, and imagine they, everyone's saying, no, I have a problem. Why? The students are not interested, they always come late. Okay, the other, so how is life there? I, I have a problem, you know, we don't have enough space and, what, okay, what about you? I also have a problem, you know, the, the equipment hasn't arrived and the students are not happy. So everyone is keep on repeating the, I noticed that the iPad is not here, yes, I know, I know, I know. You, you have to make me feel guilty, don't you? So, so, so there is always, there's always a problem. So I sort of remembered that you know when we were kids, if you say a dirty word, they make you pay 10 cents or, or something like that. Yeah. So I say, okay, what if we outlaw the word problem? And if someone utters this word, we make him or her pay one ringgit. Actually, in the beginning, I say, let, let us make them pay 10 ringgit. And, and that was like a revolution. So I say, okay, one ringgit. Then eventually we reach a stage where uh, an agreement that we appointed one of our colleagues to be uh, uh, a treasurer of that money that we will be collecting. And at the end of the year, how much money you've collected, I'm going to double it. And then the entire school could go and do something. We could go and have dinner or do whatever we want to do. Let's, let's collect the money first. At that moment, I thought that I can control the way I talk. By the end of the meeting, I uttered the P word five times. So I had to pay five ringgit myself. And that was actually quite an interesting experience and I will invite you actually to try it. It's very difficult not to utter the P word. So what we said is let's change the word P with either a challenge, if it's really something that's difficult, or an opportunity. So next time, when you have a flat tire, you just tell yourself, what an opportunity. <laughs> you know, it sounds like oxymoron, but, but believe me, believe me, it will change the world. You know, words are extremely important. People can make your day with a word. They can make you feel extremely bad for a very long time by uttering one word. Words are extremely important. And words are the manifestation of thoughts. So, so we agree that we change the word, the P word, into opportunity or a challenge. As a matter of fact, if you notice, um, I think even in, in the foundation engineering syllabus, you won't find the word P. It's always a challenge. So it's a challenge. So let's solve that challenge. So, but after this, something happened. And I was supposed to give training to uh, some energy company in Kuala Lumpur. And the, the, the course that they wanted me to teach is called problem solving. So I, 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 I say, so I thought it would be a neat idea if we start with, we don't utter the P word, and then I ask them to give me money every time they, 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 they mention the word. But these people are the customer, you know, if, what if they refuse to collaborate? So what did I do? I asked one of my students to, he's very good in design, to design me a, a banknote. And uh, we called it the opportunity note. So it's one opportunity. It's not one ringgit or one dollar. It's one opportunity. So what did I do? I went to these executives and I told them, I'm going to give every one of you three opportunities. Now, every time you utter the P word, you are losing an opportunity. So I'm going to take an opportunity from you. Now, the deal is, when you run out of opportunities, the fourth time you have to pay real money. They say, okay. <laughs> Training starts at 9 a.m. 
by, I think, 11.30, I got all my opportunities back, and they started to pay real money. And they started to watch each other. Oh, you, you, you said, yeah. <laughs> then they, so I, 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 I took that money back, but eventually I gave them uh, the banknote to, to, to keep. So I would like to have a pledge for our course. And the pledge is, from now on, we don't use the P word. We replace it with a challenge, if it's really a challenge, or an opportunity. Now, it may sound like, you know, like, how can this be an opportunity? I'm, I'm not feeling well. You know, I, you know, I had a car accident. You should, what, what do you mean an opportunity? But believe me, there's always a way to convert it, always, without exception. There's always a way to convert this into an opportunity. Would you like to do that? Okay, because if you, if you, wanna, if you are going to do that, those who would like to take the pledge, I'm going to give you an opportunity note. Yeah, and I would like you to take this very, very seriously because it's extremely important. So I would like you to keep it. And I hope that I won't have to take it back from you. Okay? So would you like to take the pledge? Okay, so those who will take the pledge, I'm going to give them uh, an opportunity note. Uh, maybe, maybe Chris can help me, yes, yes. So from now on, from now on, you will not use the P word, yes. One second, can you please repeat it? And because this will be for the online students as well. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Okay, assume like tomorrow I'm sick. Yes. And I come to you and say, sir, I can't attend your classes. And you've got, you will ask me why. I say, sir, I've got a challenge, I'm sick. Yes, Instead yes. Instead of the P word. No, but let, let's, let's, let's think about that. Let's think about that. Let's think, let's think about that. So the, for those who did not hear it, he say, if tomorrow I have, I'm sick. So I come to you and I say, you know, I'm sick. I have a challenge. Yes, when you are sick, you are having a challenge, but you have triumphed over that challenge by the fact that you woke up, by the, fa the fact that you came to the university, by the fact that you came to me and spoke to me you are already defeating that challenge. Okay. Yes? Now I'll get you. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Now, the pledge is optional. Please don't take the note if you plan to utter the P word. And I would like you to watch each other and watch me as well. How can we do that? Sorry? How can we do like watch the people and you are? No, well? I mean watch the, the, the uttering of the word. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm sure you can do that very well. I've seen you since the last class you talk to everybody around you. So you are a people person. Uh, yes. What do you say to you? What do you say to you? Me. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Tell me. Tell me what do you want? Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Would you like to start an opportunity fund? So we appoint someone to be our opportunity fund treasurer. And then if I utter the P word, I also give you a ring. It. <laughs> Sorry? No, 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 no. You, you are not getting it. You're not getting it. What will happen is this, this fund is not only for you, it's not only for me, it's for everybody. So we have 18 weeks for this semester. 
So everyone who utters the P word, will, the money will go into that fund. By the end of the semester, uh, I think he wants the mic. Navid, yes. By the end of the semester, we will have, depends how much, and then we can go and use it for something. We can buy food, we can do whatever you, whatever you guys want. Yes. Is this for only in classes or also outside of classes? Actually, I would like, you see, I'll tell you one thing. The usage of the P word, you cannot um, segment it. If you are using it outside, you will, you will have slip of tongues and you'll use it in. Only when you make a decision of not using it. Now, do you want peas in your life? So why do you use it? Because I have proven to you that when you utter the word, you will create emotions that's related to it, and things will happen to you accordingly. But if you see it as a challenge, then it's going to be a different story. So I really would like you to stop using it within the classroom, outside the classroom, and in your life. Not only that, you spread the message, if you could convince your mom to stop uttering the P word, your dad, your whoever, your brothers, yeah. It's just an invitation. I want, it's an invitation. I won't be able to watch you when you are away. But it's an invitation. You think about it. I also would like you to describe events that happen to you in your life in a, the most positive way, the most possible positive way. So these are the two things that I want you to do. Stop using the P word and also describe whatever happens to you in a positive way. So. Let, let's, 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 do you want to role play? Who want to role play with me? Yeah, we, 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 do, we make an act. I need one so that I can. Who's hands? Oh, that's you. No, I don't want hands. <laughs> no, you want to come? Okay, come. Yeah. Yeah, maybe give him this just in case he needs to hit me with. You just stand there. Yeah. Am I good looking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, stop. Can I push you back? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, so I'm skinny, skinny, I'm strong. I know. <laughs> I know. So I said that when you push me. Okay. I'd be nice. So. Did you feel good? Honestly. No, no. Even no. even even if I'm saying that let's role play, I don't think you liked it. Uh, maybe you're like now I'm kind of friendly with you, I'm all right with it. Mm. Like, if someone's stranger, I'd be like we are the bad guy. Right. But you see, you see, now let me let me narrate an example. That person who came and pushed you, had a very bad day. He just lost his wife. Maybe he's kind of removed the frustration on me. Yes. Maybe the first thing I'll say, you have any problem or you depressed or something? Yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe, that, like you said. Oh, like you said. Yes. So, so now, if you are aware of what's happening, yeah. and then you ask yourself, why this person pushed me? You see, what did you ask is you ask me why you push me, and I'll be the bad guy. You know, I know you, but I'm your friend. But, but you see, if you instead try to stop for a while, now it's very, very difficult. I don't even claim that I'm capable of doing it all the time. Seriously, seriously. But this is the thing that we want to move towards. So something bad, apparently something bad happened. Now, how is this an opportunity? 
please speak into the into the phone. Oh, this one. Yes. Yeah, speak into the mic. Okay, I'll speak into the mic. So, like you said, that someone pushed me. Yes. How how can I solve it or something like that? I didn't, I didn't get you. Let's see. How can it be like Okay, so, so I don't want to repeat it because I felt you really didn't like it. So if, if you, you are pushed by someone, yeah. how is this an opportunity? It's not an opportunity. It's not an opportunity. Okay, you stay. Who think that can find a way to make this an opportunity? Those who think it's not an opportunity, I'm not talking to you. I want someone to, to, give us, to give us a way to think of this as an opportunity. Yes, please. Uh, I think when he pushes you, you get to interact with him. You get to know what is his, what is his challenge. And you get to like, deal with the situation better next time in that sense. Okay, so you are saying, you are saying this is an opportunity for learning. So people come... They push me. I think there is an opportunity for me to learn more so that next time. Okay, sorry, you need to speak into the mic so, so that we can capture it. Yes? No, he didn't. You see, no, no, no. I, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go back. So I have pushed him. Now he can hit me with the mic. He can. The, the, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. When someone is being pushed, which part of the brain I am stimulating? I'm stimulating the reptilian brain. It's not the emotional brain. This is like, what? This is, why you push me? You know, you, you, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the, in, the instinctive brain. So, because this could be a threat to his life. So this is not about emotion anymore. This is like, if someone push you, have you been in the situation where automatically you, you, you hit or push back? Yeah. Yeah. This is, you don't control it. Or someone shout at you, you shout back, or, or you do something, sometimes you even regret later. So what I've done just now, I have activated the reptilian brain. That's the old brain. Okay. Now, if he manages, he will definitely be angry. But he manages with his... Because the, the part that I can teach is this, is the, is the new brain. It, it can think, it can reason. So that part stops the old brain and say, hang on a second, this is an opportunity. So it starts like this, an opportunity? What do you mean? But now let's help him see it as an opportunity. So can you show him that this was an opportunity so that he doesn't hit me back but maybe instead, thank me. Thank you for pushing me. Yes. Yes. Because if I've given you an opportunity, you should thank me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in but, the beginning, but, well, one second, let's, because we need the mic. So I, I, do you have anything to say? Okay. I don't want to start an argument with you. It's just like somebody pushed me. I find it like weird to say thank you for pushing me. No. Because you are missing the link. The first part, you need to convince yourself. So first you say, hmm, this is an opportunity. Or, where is the opportunity? Then you think for a while and you're, aha, so this is an opportunity for this. And then you say, thank you. Or you don't have to say thank you, but you really thank me for, for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need you to really think, all of you. Okay, so, so okay, uh, the, you first, and then uh, you raise your hand. So, what, what's your name, sorry? Yeah. Uh, Rex. Yeah, Rex, Rex. Uh, would you, uh, can you take him? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is that, yeah, sure, if you want to go, but they are, they're actually trying to help you now oh. to see the opportunity, yes. Um, to me, um, that event that just happened is an opportunity to learn um, self-control, because if self-control is a challenge that you face in life, you know, um, then maybe like that someone pushing you, you can think about it for a while. You know, you, you can try and reason, use the new, uh, the new part of your brain, try to reason. Um, you know, he probably had a bad day, um, shouldn't blame him, his emotions are taking over and I should learn self-control. And if I don't want people to do that to me, I should learn and not let my emotions take over and not do that to people as well. 
Okay. Uh, I think we, I have another response. You, you, someone else want to respond? Okay, uh, give it to me, sorry, because uh, the lady first. Yes. Uh, I agree with Rex because yes. uh, we should learn to, uh, that will help me to learn to control my emotions and handle the situation more positively. Right. So that I don't repeat it to somebody else. Right. And I am not able to control my emotions. Right. Okay, very good. Anyone else want to say something? How, how, can, how can he use this as an opportunity? Now, now, did that convince you? Yeah, a little bit. Little bit. Okay, okay so, so let's, let's, let's now try it again. <laughs> now, I want you, I want you, I want you to imagine. No, 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 just imagine with me. Please, you, you stay with me. I want you to imagine now, I am having a rifle. <laughs> okay? So that the first guy who came taught you self-control. Okay, now I'm having a rifle and I'm also having a very bad day. <laughs> Are you thankful for the guy who taught you self-control? Because now the new guy has a rifle yeah. and it could actually kill you. Yeah. So, yes. so now maybe, maybe you were not thankful for him on that time itself, but the fact that you managed to control yourself now, you could actually find a way to just avoid and let this guy go. He had a bad time. I don't want to, you know, because I understand maybe you had a very difficult, you know, day. And you know any engagement, you'll be killed. Of course, yeah. yeah. So do, do you see how it can be an opportunity? Yeah, it can be. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So let's go back to this. Let's repeat the same exercise without using any negative terms, please. So what is this? Oh, it's OK, so some, now, now, just now it was cockroach, everyone. Now there are set different things here. So you wanted to say something. So what is this? Someone here said something. What, what is this? <laughs> What? A pen? A pet. Pet. P-E-T. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good way of looking at it. So this could be a pet, right? Yes? What? A fishing bait. A fishing bait. Okay. So you're, now you are thinking differently. Yes. Yes. This is, this is a very good start. So what I said, I chose, I chose to call it Platella Asahinae. Do you know what is this? This is its scientific name. It's, it is exactly this, but this is its scientific name. Now, the scientific name, interestingly, doesn't have any emotional connection to it yet. So, I give it its scientific name. Now, what do you think of it? No, 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 we, ha we haven't gone to the, what, do you still kill? So, this guy now, you... You see, the pledge that you just made is to think of everything positively. So describe this poor guy not using any negative term. Is what? Kill. Cute. Yes, it's cute. Yes, what else? Delicious. Oh, you've been to Thailand. Okay, so he, had, he ate it in Thailand, it was delicious. Okay, what else, what else? Interesting. Interesting. Cannot hurt me. Unique. Fast. Brown. Chocolate. Has wings. She liked it with chocolate. Okay, so it's, it's a flyer, it's resilient, it's brown, it has antennas, it has six legs, it's a, it's a wing, it has protein. All these are things that we could have used it to describe exactly the same creature. Now, honestly speaking, I really want you to be serious and to be with me now. Thinking of it 
as a creature that has protein, that is fast, that can fly, that is resilient, that has wings and so on and so forth, what do you think the opportunities can this creature bring? Mutation. Mutation. Okay, so, so maybe you do research on it. What else? Nutrients. So nutrients, you could use it maybe as food for the animals or the pets or being fast, you know, where does this creature live? Uh, In sewage, right? So just imagine if we could put some sensors on it so it can actually sense the material that we have in the, in the sewage. And all these things are actually happening. So it just happened by maybe we change the way we think. And started by changing the name. So it's extremely important. If you want, for example, to develop your relationship with a person, and let's say you had a difficult time with that person. In your mind, if you call him the troublemaker, you know, you don't tell him the troublemaker, but you know, every time you see him say, there comes the troublemaker. Mm -hmm. That will create your world, and that person will become a troublemaker. Now, what if the person maybe really is a troublemaker? How do I give him uh, a, a, a positive uh, kind of name? Challenge a challenge giver. A uh, person with a nice hair, if I like his hair. If his, if his watch is nice, I will say the person with the watch. If I like his shirt, I could maybe say something about, oh, the guy with the checkered shirt. Something like that. And, and I use this to help me, guide me into naming, then classifying, which will cause the, uh, the emotion, and eventually wiring and rewiring in a positive way. So it's about naming, following by classifying, where the emotions get involved at times, and eventually um, rewiring. Now, on your uh, course page on open learning, there is a tab that's called brain rewiring. And again, this, is, this has to be a daily exercise. So in brain rewiring, I would like you to go there and report every day five things that you are grateful for today. Sorry? <laughs> the iPad. Yes, actually, you can be grateful for anticipating an iPad. Yeah. So, so, so five things that, so hopefully maybe by very soon, I will see everyone very grateful for having an iPad. So the idea is this. Yeah, you, you need to stay with me, please. The idea is this. I want you every day, when you wake up, think of the five things that you are grateful for today. I know there are hundreds of things maybe you are not grateful for. You dread the traffic jam, the fact that you have to wake, wake up early. I know about that, and I am not interested in it. I'm interested in what are the five things that you are grateful for. And this could be your bed, the fact that you can see, the fact that you still have you know, all your mental faculties and, and, and legs and, and arms, or the fact that your mom has prepared food for you, the fact that you have whatever. Now, interestingly, again, if you go to the website, you'll find that the online students are already brain rewiring uh, as we speak. So I want you to mention or, or actively uh, count these five things. And this will have a magical impact on how your brain will rewire. So if you keep on doing it throughout the semester, uh, the, you, will, you will develop a skill of seeing or, or, or recognizing the opportunities that are out there. Now, there is a reason why we ask you to do this. You know the brain is wired to respond to negative stimuli. If everything is perfect, 
the temperature is right, the light is right, you are comfortable, the brain doesn't give you any signal. Now, if there is a bad smell, if the aircon stops working, if the stool is not comfortable, your brain is going to give you a signal straight away. And that is very useful for survival. So if there is an animal coming to eat you, it's very good that your brain quickly alerts you to this adverse change of events. But in the process, we lose a lot of opportunities. So what I would like you to do is to rewire your brain so that it can respond to positive stimuli as well. To be grateful that the aircon is working, to be grateful that we have light, that we have electricity, because all these things, not everyone has them. Even the fact that we have hands and legs, and mouth and head and brain. Yeah, I mean, this poor guy doesn't have his brain anymore. So, so rewiring your brain will enable you to create a state of mind that will enable you to change the world. And I mean that literally. So from now until the end of the semester, as I said, I would like you to do the brain rewiring exercise on open learning. Now, open learning is a beautiful platform. And it's just like Facebook. You can like comments. You can tag people. And all these things can happen there. So I, it's, it's very interesting. And once you get onto it, you'll be hooked. So it's, um, it's a good thing. And that will build real stronger connection in the synapses in, in your brain. So I'm about to finish. So let me recap. You will need to report five new things. So I don't want you to every day I'm grateful for the iPad. I'm grateful for the iPad. I want to be grateful for other things besides the iPad. And report them on the brain rewiring page. And you will actively replace the word P with opportunity or challenge, both in your spoken and written communications. So even when you write, please avoid using the P word. And you will report your emotions on emotions today. Uh, the video for today will be available in one or two days together with the notes. So I'm uploading the notes as well. So everything that you need will be on, on open learning. Uh, there's a question. Uh, Chris, you need to give him the mic. Can you pass the mic for me, please? Sorry? What's that, sorry? The treasure. Oh, the treasurer. Oh, OK. We haven't agreed. Have we agreed that we, do you want to have the, the opportunity fund? OK, do you think Naveed is a good treasurer? No. OK, okay who would like to volunteer to be the treasurer? No, what's the, so we want to volunteer. Cash. Yeah, sounds like perfect. Who's cash? OK, so please, every time. Now, now we will rely on you. Even if you mention the P word at home, you will come to Cash and give him one, one ringgit. <laughs> yes, I, I think you, you, will, you will do it. Yeah, because that will help you. That will help you to, to change. OK, this is my last activity today. I, I would like a few of you to tell us, what did you learn today? And what will you do differently from now on? Yes, someone there? Yeah. What did you learn first? Okay. Someone, I think you, you said something, right? Yeah. Come on. OK, you've learned nothing? <laughs> OK, so what did you learn? Yeah, since, since you have the mic. Yeah, positive thinking. Positive thinking. Yeah. She's a world-class caller. Give her, let's see what. Yeah. Yes. Um, to be positive in life and make a change.
because the only thing that's constant in life is changes. Okay, so... Okay, anyone going to do something different from now on? Yes. Yes, you're right, what's that? <laughs> I think so negatively. Okay, so, so you, you, you think negatively and you will stop thinking negatively? Yes. Okay, what else? I'll be a good guy. He will be a good guy. Okay, you want to say something? Who will stop using the P word? Everyone. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend and have a wonderful break. Thanks.